I appreciate Thanks, your time. Man. I appreciate everything you've done for me. I appreciate all the other cases you're managing and, and uh, hopefully we don't get a bill like that again. It's, yeah. uh, it, it, Sorry uh, about uh, that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually, a lot of it's not even yours and I, and I know no, that I you've, done, you've done a lot of work for us and it's really fair and I think you've saved us a lot more than... Um, I think that's probably right. We probably uh, overall, I think we're on front, in front on the relationship. But still, uh, you know, look, I don't like to underestimate, but we did on this occasion. But uh, it, it, uh, it's something that's out of our hand. It was out of our hands in this case. Well, I'll tell you, our, our viewers, they're they're loyal, and they know that, um, that that if we're fighting it, win or lose, it's worth having. And I think it is. You know, the fact that the government is so desperate to try stop little old me from holding him accountable in Parliament just shows how important it is to have that fight. My fellow rebels, I'm back here outside the Supreme Court of Victoria, where any day now, the judge is expected to hand down his ruling in my case to gain access to Daniel Andrews press conferences. But the reason I'm today catching up with my lawyer and making this video is because I need your help. I really need your help again. I need you to dig deep and support me because when we initially took up this fight, we were estimated between 80 to $100,000. But for reasons you're about to hear from our lawyer, that number has Triple. The simple reason is the government fought it so hard. Um, you know, they got a QC in, so we had a couple of barristers and a team uh, of lawyers from a private firm uh, fighting us. Even though the cost of this case blew out of expected proportions, it's still worth it. We've got to have these fights each and every time. Win some, lose some. We've certainly won some, but we need to have them. Otherwise, the government is never going to be held accountable. And the judgment, hopefully it comes through and we do win it, but I need your help. RVLegalFind.com, please give what you can to ensure that we can have this fight, hopefully win this fight, and to live another day for the next fight. RVLegalFind.com, every dollar counts. It wasn't just the size of the team that they uh, they threw at us, but it was the arguments. You know, they relied on a, uh, a thing called exclusive cognizance of parliament. This is something that comes from the, the constitution from, you know, a hundred years ago it says the uh, the parliament has the powers of the House of the English House of Commons from 1865. And that was set up from cases going back into the 1700s. So we were literally going back and having to look at cases from hundreds of years ago and argue this, uh, this uh, idea, this concept of Parliament's ex exclusive cognizance which means basically the courts can't, uh, you know, can't actually uh, influence what the, the, the parliament does and can't uh, sit in judgment over the parliament. So um, it, that was really uh, uh, the, the key thing. But then on every single argument, uh, it became like a royal commission almost. We knew they weren't going to um, roll over easily, but um, it, we didn't realise how much they didn't want this decision-making process uh, to be exposed and reversed. I think many of the viewers would have gone, well, that would have been pretty naive to think that they weren't going to put everything at fighting, little, mean Avi. But just for people to understand, when we first drew up the estimate of what was involved uh, with this, obviously you guys have a lot of experience with judicial reviews. What, would, what, what really did that look like compared to this? Yeah, well, look, we probably um, underestimate, well, we did underestimate, uh, so we had, uh, you know, less than 100 grand was our estimate, um, and we've, uh, I think we've doubled that, uh, and then maybe... Almost maybe, tripled. Maybe, maybe a bit more. Thanks for picking me up on that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so look, that's, uh, and that's part and Part, part of these things, and estimates are never absolute or guaranteed, but yeah, it, it was difficult. I mean, all the way, I mean, you, <laughs> you sat next to me in court and you saw the, um, uh, the debating, if you like, on our side about how exactly we were going to put our case. So constantly, all the way through the case itself, we did all the work in preparation, but all the way through the through the case, um, we were off at lunchtime and then every evening um, doing research and arguing um, amongst ourselves about how best to present the case. So, um, and, and, you know, with every move the government make this way, we've got to then counter that. Uh, so, yeah, look, it was just a classic case of underestimating the fight that was going to be put up on the other side, which means then we underestimated the total 
costs that we were going to incur. Well, and when you compare that to what to, uh, the, the kind of judicial review that it, it was expected to be, compared to the argument they brought up, what, what would you... What was the picture? What did we envisage the fight was going to be about instead of this constitutional argument that they took it to? Yeah, well, we expected the fight to be about the decision-making process. You know, what they what they did and didn't take into account, what they should have taken into account, um, and, and whether or not it was a, a good and fair process, therefore the decision, whether or not it was a, a correct decision. So that's a totally different argument. I mean, we were having that as well. But in addition to that, and totally separate and totally different to that, we're having this argument about um, constitutional powers of um, the parliament versus the courts and, uh, you know, what Lord so-and-so said in the 1700s. And um, frankly, uh, I don't think there would be a lawyer in uh, Victoria who would say, I'm an expert in exclusive cognizance, the, the concept of exclusive. It's so rarely argued that what we all had to do was go back, um, we had to go back to school basically on, on, this, uh, on this topic. And we were researching from a, from a really low base of, of knowledge really about um, exactly how, how we were gonna make this argument. So that, what that requires is everyone having to read these cases, and they're not easy cases to read. The, the old English uh, language isn't uh, isn't overly easy to read. So, so we're going back back to the drawing board almost on this um, totally separate argument. That, frankly, my view is putting legal arguments aside for a moment, which you shouldn't be having. Forget those things. Was this a, a right decision, and was the process fair? That's what we should be arguing about. 2022, you know, um, but we've got no control over that. That's the argument the government put forward. We've got to meet that argument. And so that's why we had to go back to the drawing board and, um, you know, school ourselves in um, exclusive cognizance, the concept. Yep. So in layman's terms, basically, we prepared initially for a judicial review to determine, for the court to determine whether it was a fair process and decision to have me banned from parliament. Yep. Um, but then what the government came back with was essentially lawfare. They wanted to make it as hard and as expensive as possible, so they've come back with this really hard, difficult part of the law in addition to the judicial review. So it wasn't in place of the judicial review. They also, we had the argument of judicial fairness, and that's, uh, from what I understand, there's two parts of the decision that have to come through. There's the judicial review itself, and then there's the, the whether the court had the jurisdiction, that extra argument. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. You really only get to the, that, that first part you mentioned if you, if you get past the jurisdictional point. If the court doesn't have jurisdiction, that's really the end of it. If, you, if the court has jurisdiction, then the court's got to decide um, the case. And it's not just a um, uh, you know, complex and difficult area of the law. It's an ancient area of the law. I mean, that's the. I think that's the really, for me, interesting part of this is that the government went back to, um, you know, what the the powers of the English House of Commons had in 1865. And let's just say that again. We're talking about the powers that the English House of Commons had in 1865, and whether that stops a judge in 2022 in the Victorian Supreme Court um, saying anything about the decision um, that was made about who can enter the enter the grounds of the Victorian Parliament. I mean, that, I, that, on any view, um, seems extraordinary to me, uh, but that's the law and that's what we had to argue. So, um, yeah, so that's that's where we ended. And this is why the, that's why this case was um, far more hard fought uh, in terms of the time that it took for us to prepare and to argue the case than we expected. At Rebel News, obviously, the, the way we fight all these cases, we crowdfunded this one off the estimate initially. We plan to pull 100000 from my legal fund that's there for these kind of fights. Now that it's blown out, I think it's at 278 or somewhere around. That's almost three times. Um, we're going to ask our viewers again to chip in and help pay for it, um, the, the balance here. Now, two questions. That some of them might ask, well, why bother using such a, an expensive QC to fight this and have such a large team? We had, a, there was a, a whole team working on this for weeks 
instead of just having, you know, one solicitor and barrister fighting it? What would you say to those viewers? Well, you've got to, you've got to match firepower with firepower. There's no, there's no point going into a gunfight with a knife. So if you've got a QC who, on the other side who's twisting and turning, you really want to be able to match that. And uh, frankly, if you're not really doing that, why are you there? You know, and that's, I think it, you'd, be, you'd be really wasting, even though you'd be saving money in some sense, you'd be really wasting that money. Um, we've got a real shot of winning this. I hope that we do. I expect that we will. I think we should. Um, now, uh, I'm not sure I'd be able to say that if we'd gone in underprepared, if it was just, um, you know, little old me making the argument by myself up against the team of barristers and QCs. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the short version on that. Well, I think that's a great answer for those that didn't watch, especially the last 10 minutes, you and me sitting there. In the last 10 minutes of that case, I think it became quite clear why Will Horton is so good at his job. And I felt grateful and I certainly think that from somebody that sat there and was throughout the process and has been in a number of legal battles till now, realising that it is actually important to go in with the best or not go in at all. Yeah. It's not worth having it. Um, yes, you may lose it and you may be up for costs again, but it's better than just walking in knowing you're going to lose it. Yeah. Guys, I know I often crowdfund for other people's cases uh, a couple times for myself, but this time it's really <laughs> for me. I can't afford the 278,000 or more than a quarter of a million dollars to have this fight. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you that have donated till now. And those of you that can re-donate or are going to donate uh, to ensure that we can have these fights. None of this, po none of this is possible without your help. Avilegalfund.com. Every dollar counts. Every dollar will help ensure that I will live to fight another day. Avilegalfund.com.